Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Today I'm going to cover two independent but related projects in a single video. The first is a parking assistant, and the second is vehicle presence detection for your garage. Why did I combine both of these projects into one video? Hang around and find out. As I mentioned in the opening, today I'm going to be covering two independent and separate projects. This is a parking assistant and vehicle detection. Now, either one of these projects can be implemented on their own without reliance on the other. The reason I'm combining them here is because by having both, it gives us some unique opportunities in Home Assistant for creating home and away detection and creating automations around things like unlocking doors and disabling the alarm system and giving us some redundancy and security around that. Now, if you're only interested in one of these projects, I will leave chapter links down in the video description so you can jump ahead to whichever project that you have interest in. But first off, I'm going to talk about Parking Assistant. Now, this is based heavily on an Instructables article by MedInc, if I'm pronouncing that properly, but I made some significant changes to it, uh, primarily uh, some of the wiring, elimination of the sensor, and adding MQTT to be able to bring this information into Home Assistant so we can use it for automations. Now, talking about a parking assistant, many of you are probably familiar with this method of parking assistant, the old tennis ball on a string. Now, I will say this about it. It's consistent and reliable. Everyone knows how to use it. You line your mirror up with that tennis ball, you pull forward till your windshield touches it, and you're parked in the right position. Obviously, it's extremely low cost or free if you have some spare tennis balls and string laying around. And you don't have to do any upgrades or any maintenance on this, and you don't need power or internet. However, the drawback is we can't integrate it for automations. And to be honest, it's just boring and old school. And like me, if you use your garage as a workshop a lot of times, you're constantly bumping your head on the tennis ball or swinging a ladder around and catching it on the string. So my approach was there had to be a better way to do this. So here we can see a demo where the display is asleep until it detects a car. As you approach the properly parked position, it's going to provide a countdown as you get closer and closer. Once you hit the right position, then you're going to get a green uh, plus mark in the middle telling you you're in the right position. If you happen to pull too far forward, it's going to start flashing at you with a red X telling you to back the car up until you're in the proper position. So here are the primary components that make up the, the parking assistant. At the very bottom, we're looking at a TF Mini uh, LiDAR distance sensor and it's pretty accurate up to about 118 inches and down to uh, a small enough amount that you wouldn't want to get your close your car that close to the wall. That is connected via DuPont cables to a USB TTL adapter that plugs in to the USB port of the Raspberry Pi. Now in my case I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I think the original Instructables article actually used a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero so you could obviously use a Pi 4. Uh, a 3B is, works out fine for me. Uh, 32 by 32 pixel matrix display and then a couple of different power supplies. Now the original Instructables article again powered the matrix off of the Raspberry Pi. I had issues with with pixelating and ghosting on the display and so one of the changes I did make was to, was to give the matrix di display its own 5 volt 3 amp power supply separate from, from the Raspberry Pi. Again, uh, if you're interested in, in the full details of the wiring and the Raspberry or the Python program that, that runs this, I'll include a link to my blog article that gives all the details on this down below. But as a quick glance, this is the wiring between the, the Raspberry Pi and the matrix panel. And this is the wiring between that TF Mini display sensor and the uh, USB TTL. So here's a closer up look at, at the actual wiring. This entire project was completed with no soldering if you're solder adverse. Um, everything was done with DuPont connectors between the sensor and the USB TTL and between the Raspberry Pi and the Matrix. I actually used the 5 volt from the Raspberry Pi to, to power a fan because our garage gets a little bit warm. Uh, all those DuPont connectors go into a ribbon cable that came with the Matrix. The only other thing I did here was I did run uh, the power supplies to its own 5 volt 3 amp power supply because again I was seeing some ghosting when I tried to power both the Raspberry Pi and the display from the same power supply. And so by implementing MQTT in the Python program this allows the parking assistant to bring data back into Home Assistant. Uh, 
things that we're bringing back in is whether a car is detected or not detected, the actual nominal park distance of a car, assuming that a car is there. Normally, if a car is not there, that will read the maximum. In my case, is about 118 inches. Whether the display is currently asleep or active, an overall basically system status, if it had any, any kind of issues or anything uh, communicating through MQTT broker or anything like that, an error will show there. And when it was last updated. I think I have this set to update of MQ, MQTT values about once every three minutes, but that is customizable within the Python code. Next, we're going to talk about the second project, and that's vehicle presence detection for your garage. Again, this project can be done independent of the parking assistant. The parking assistant is not required for this particular project. And like the parking assistant, this entire project can be completed without soldering if you're solder adverse. Of course, you can't always solder the connections, but you can do it with nothing other than DuPont connectors. What we're going to do here is we're going to mount two ultrasonic distance sensors over the position of each car, ideally trying to place that sensor right about the middle of the, of the roof of the car when it's parked. Again, this could be adopted for just a single car or even a three-car garage if you have a, a third vehicle as well. Now, these are powered by a Node MCU which is going to run ESP Home. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. And here are the primary components that make up the vehicle sensor system. We're going to use two HCSR04 ultrasonic sensors. Again, you saw those mounted over the car. Those are connected to Node MCU, which is powered by a 5-volt USB uh, power supply, which uh, really is just a, like a phone charger or a USB adapter plugged into our unused outlet for our garage door opener. Now, in this particular case, I've added a completely optional read, sense, read switch connection to my garage door. This also lets me know uh, whether the garage door is opened or closed. I had to do that because at the time of this, uh, my current garage door opener did not have a local API and was not available to integrate into Home Assistant. But that recently, that has changed. I currently use the Tailwind IQ3 Smart Garage Door Opener. Now I love Tailwind because it adds an additional layer of security I've not seen in other smart garage door openers. Instead of just using your phone for geofencing to open your garage door, it actually uses the Bluetooth connection between your phone and your vehicle to determine when to open or close your door. So uh, it will not automatically open your door with just your phone or just your vehicle, it actually needs both. Now the one drawback was that initially Tailwind did not have a local API. They promised it in 2021 and they've delivered. They now have a, a beta version of their API and working with them, I've developed a Tailwind MQTT bridge that will allow you to bring Tailwind status and garage door control into Home Assistant. If you're interested in that, take a look at the links down below and I will have a link to the GitHub uh, with the beta version of the Tailwind MQTT bridge. Um, I will say Tailwind did not sponsor this video and I did not receive any compensation for including them. I just really love their product. Another nice feature of Tailwind are the, the reed switches or door sensors. They mount on the rail. Uh, they're very reliable and very easy to install and align. So here's the second one that I installed. I actually ordered a second Tailwind uh, sensor kit for my, my Node MCU. Um, again, I don't really need it now that I have it integrated, but it is nice to have the redundancy. You just simply run the wiring along the back side of the door rail, just being sure that none of the wires are loosely caught up in the door. Uh, run it up the frame and run it over to the Node MCU. Again, having two of them allows me to make sure that they're in agreement before I do something like this on my alarm system. And here's the wiring schematic. It's really pretty straightforward. Both your HCS04, SR04 ultrasonic sensors uh, receive uh, 5 volt and ground from your Node MCU, and then each have a trigger and an echo pin that we connect to a GPIO pin. So it's going to send out a pulse and then measure the amount of time it takes for that pulse to return uh, to the distance sensor, and that's how it determines distance. So it's, it's really pretty straightforward. We're going to power this off of 5 volt uh, USB, again from that AC outlet on the garage. We're going to use ESP Home as the code for this. If you're interested in the code, uh, or the binary that, that's uploaded to this. Again, see the link to my blog and I uh, list the entire code that's used for ESP Home on how to power these sensors. And again, down here at the bottom is that completely optional 
uh, reed switch that we're going to connect to our garage door so we also know if the garage door is opened or closed. So using our, our Node MCU and ESP Home we can see that we have three entities that automatically come into Home Assistant. We have the distance of the first car currently being reported as 4.2 feet, the distance of the second car is 4.3 feet, and we have that uh, reed switch that I added. With the addition of, of the Tailwind API and the MQTT to bridge, we also have a second door sensor. This is nice because we can always make sure to, co to compare these and assure that they're in agreement before we do something like enable or disable the alarm system. So next we're going to take a look at how we can bring both the parking assistant and this vehicle presence system into Home Assistant and make automations from it. So before we actually create our Home Assistant automations, we are going to create a couple of manual entities in Home Assistant. So our vehicle presence sensor gives us the distance uh, to the car in, ter in terms of feet. Um, what we really want to know is whether the car is home or away. So we're going to create a couple of binary sensors based on the measured distance. And that measured distance can fluctuate a little bit. So for example, if someone leaves the sunroof open, that distance might, might vary three to four inches. So what we're going to do is set a range here for each of the car sensors. And if it's within that range, we're going to consider the car home. If it's outside that range, either shorter or greater than that distance, we're going to consider that car away. So we'll create these, and once we have those, we can look at creating our automations. And by the way, again, copies of all this code are in the blog that I linked to in the video description. So now that we've created those additional binary sensors, let's take a look at what all we have available for creating secure arrival and departure automations in Home Assistant. First, from our parking assistant, we, we have car presence. We know whether the car is currently there or not there, and we can determine that based on, on the car parked distance. Using our vehicle presence, we know whether car 1 is home or away, we know whether car 2 is home or away, we know whether the garage door is opened or closed, and potentially we have redundancy there by having two sensors to make sure that they're in agreement, so in case one sensor goes flaky on us, we can actually verify that both sensors are reporting that the door is opened or closed. There are some additional sensors that we have available, or could make available, and that is phone presence. You can do that through either uh, via Nabacasa, if you have a Nabacasa description, and the mobile app, it will let you know whether a phone is, is in or out of a home zone. And of course, there are other presence options that you can either do around your phone, or you can use motion detection or other sensors to determine whether someone is home or away. So given all those entities, let's take a look at a couple of automation ideas. First, let's, let's take away an away or departure automation. We can say that if both vehicles are away. Now we have redundant checks on that. We have our vehicle presence detection and we have our parking assistant to verify that both are in agreement that a vehicle is away. And the garage door is closed. We have, again, we have redundant checks on that because we have multiple sensors on our garage door and both phones are outside the home zone. If all that is true, then lock the doors, turn off the lights, arm the alarm system, do whatever kind of away automations that you want. Why I like the redundant checks here is to assure that someone doesn't get locked out of the house inadvertently. Um, for example, let's say you go for a walk and you take your phones with you and all of a sudden the doors lock. Well, this is not going to occur because the, the cars are still present. So again, by having a redundant checks and having multiple ways to assure, yes, everyone has gone out of the house and we want to complete these actions. On the flip side of this, Let's take a look at an arrival automation. This is probably even more important because you're looking at access to your home. So in this case, we'll say if a vehicle status changes from away to home. We know a vehicle has arrived. And again, we have redundant checks on that. We have our vehicle sensors or our vehicle presence. And we also have our parking assistant say that will confirm that yes, a vehicle has arrived at home. And the garage door is open. Once again, we have two sensors telling us whether the garage door is opened or closed. And one or other of our phones have entered the home zone. Then we can safely say, unlock the doors, turn on the lights, disarm the alarm system. So again, if a single phone enters the home zone without a vehicle, none of this is going to happen. Uh, 
If the garage door opens, but a vehicle isn't detected or a phone doesn't enter the zone, none of this is going to happen. So by having multiple sensors and multiple redundancies, I personally feel secure by having Home Assistant complete these automation steps to disable my alarm system and or unlock my doors. So that's going to do it for this video. Again, uh, I have a blog article that contains all the parts lists, the code, wiring schematics on how to make all this work. If you found this video at all helpful or useful, please hit that like button. That lets me and YouTube know that you found this video useful. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when a new video is released, click that little bell icon. As always, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon.